Okay, so welcome to Vietnam. We're here in Ho Chi Minh City, in amongst Ben Tan Market with all the produce, all of the t-shirts, all the things that are for sale. What we're here for though, more importantly, is this world of coffee here in Vietnam. So what we're looking at is we're looking at the brewing methods, we're looking at the culture of Vietnamese coffee. We're going to visit a plantation in the Luc region and we're going to just enjoy the coffee culture and the culture of Vietnam. So please join us, enjoy it, and enjoy the Vietnamese experience. Good morning, Vietnam. in the Bentham market looking at weasel coffee. Uh, what, weasel special coffee. weasel coffee. What is weasel coffee? Weasel. Yeah. You smell. Smell it. Oh wow. Rich <laughs> chocolatey notes, butter, caramel scent coming out of it. But what does a weasel do? The, the weasel eats and where does it come out of? Where does it come out of? It eats it and then what? And then poos it out. It poos it out. <laughs> it poos it out. And you drink this. Yes. You like it? Yeah, I like it. You like it? Delicious. Delicious. Okay, very good. Now the weasel coffee is delicious. Now, are you able to make me a coffee? Are you able to make a coffee for me? Yeah. What a smell. <laughs> oh. Iced wow. weasel coffee. Let's have a go at this one. <laughs> wow, that's strong. But again, it has this um, real molasses taste, but it's got a real burnt, toasty note to it. Um, probably prefer it with a little bit more milk just to um, just soften it down a little bit. But would I drink it normally? Probably not. No, I would. Um, <coughs> I think it's way too strong. <laughs> wow, that's really intense. That's really wild. Really over caramelised and bitterness. I suppose we're not really used to, but that's um, that's a wake me up coffee if you've ever had one. So here we are in Vietnam and I'm with Mr Nhu and he's been very kind enough for us to come and visit his house and visit his family and share some of his experiences and also he's going to take us out to his uh, coffee plantation so we can have a bit of an experience uh, and experience also the Vietnamese culture and the Vietnamese coffee plantation so looking forward to it. Thank you very much for inviting us and uh, let's have some fun. arrived at our first coffee plantation just out of Dalat. And when we think of Vietnamese coffee, we normally think of Robusta coffee, but this is an Arabica plantation of five hectares. The variety is a Catamore variety, and we're here at about 1,415 metres, so it's quite high grown. Um, in the background, we've got the persimmon trees, which um, provide the shade for these plants. And from this plantation, we're producing about 4,000 kilos a year.
How are we going, boys? Hard work, Justin. Hey? Hot, hot. Tell you what, um, I've got a few beans in my basket. I don't know about you. Oh, hang on a sec. Hang on. Oh, hi, Mum. How are you going? Oh, no, I'm picking coffee with Steve and Sean. Yeah, no, in Vietnam. Yeah, no, no, I've got a full-time job here now. Yeah, I know I know you love the Vietnamese. Yeah, absolutely. Look, I've got to go. We're, we're pretty busy here at the moment because my basket's nearly full. Okay, catch ya. Bye. How many beans you got in your basket? Um, seven. Nine. <laughs> um, yeah, probably got about 12. A couple of things about Vietnam, though. Um, it is the second uh, most traded commodity stock in coffee in the world um, behind Brazil. Um, the other myth I wanted to talk about was uh, Vietnam is not all about Robusta, okay? This is a, a full Arabica plantation and this particular region is uh, fully Arabicas. The Arabica coffee that we've had uh, over the last couple of days have been absolutely fantastic. Shall we keep picking, boys? I think so. Yeah? Are you happy though? Beer is it beer o'clock? <laughs> We've only been picking for like five minutes. Um, do you reckon you could do this full time? Pretty hard work, pretty yeah, hard work. I don't think so. No, 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 not at all. <sighs> I've been out there, like, felt my like days, and this is all I've got. <laughs> I think I deserve a coffee. <laughs> After a hard day out picking, this is uh, where the workers come and have their uh, cup of tea and a little rest and get out of the sunshine. It's very hot out there, so this is just a typical uh, worker's hut. One thing that we uh, found quite cool is that just behind me here is a little hand-built um, stone oven. Um, this is what they traditionally cook on in Vietnam, but what is different about this setup is actually use the dried coffee pulp um, to actually fuel the fire. Um, so there's actually no waste in the whole coffee process. Um, um, what, what are we getting paid for this anyway? I think we're going to get a ride back into town. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> That's fair enough. That's a fair deal, isn't it? Yeah, I think, I so. think it's a fair deal. Yeah. Well, Sean, we're back into Ho Chi Minh, but more importantly, we're back where? Koto. Koto. Yeah. Um, what a terrific concept it is. Fantastic, getting street kids off the street, giving them real jobs, you know, after two years of uh, intensive hospitality training in all facets, cooking, um, front of house and, and barista coffee skills. Yep, so Koto is all about uh, teaching the young kids how to survive in the real world. Given that they're coming back from a, like, or coming from an underprivileged um, environment, uh, they would never have had those set of skills. So the two years is really important for them, um, for their development, and they get 100% uh, success rate in regards to yeah, job finding. Five-star five hotels line up for them. They, they're basically, you know, as soon as the graduation's um, completed, they, they've got jobs to go to. Yeah, and a couple of years ago when we first encountered Jimmy Fan and Koto, that was in Hanoi. Uh, we did some training on behalf of Box Hill Institute. And of course, it's all you know spread from there too, hasn't it? Oh, it's, it's great to see. It. And we're at the new uh, Saigon building or restaurant. Um, it's great to see. It's very classy. A lot of uh, foreigners and tourists here, and, and the food's fantastic. It's a credit to the organisation. So, if you're in Saigon, look from Sean and I's point of view, come down, check it out. It's in District Three. Um, fine wine, fine foods, good coffees, great staff. Look, you're going to just be looked after well. Smiling, so, smiling faces. And, you know, and that's what we're here yeah. for. So come down and support these guys and uh, they'll support you at the other end. So happy going at Koto. Good work, Koto.